Welcome into AT&T Stadium, everybody. It's Nick Walters here for the 2022 rendition of the Southwest Classic between number 10 Arkansas and number 23 Texas A&M. Now, last year, the Hogs took down the Aggies for the first time in years, pulling off an improbable upset. But this year, different circumstances as the Hogs are ranked higher and trying to prove that the hype is real. Sam Pittman and the Hogs are back at the house Jerry built, renewing animosities with their neighbor state rival, Texas A&M. Rocket Sanders looks to build on his sensational rushing season. KJ Jefferson tries to solidify himself as a premier SEC quarterback, and the Razorbacks try to stay perfect. Early on, the defense would answer the bell. Drew Sanders on the bull rush, bulldozing his way back to the passer. The nation's leader in sacks entering the night adds another. On their second drive, Arkansas's offense gets going. Nobody's spying KJ, and he makes the Aggies pay, taking open space for a 26-yard chunk. Next play. Jefferson swings it out to Keytron Jackson, picking up a block, hitting the gas, and zooming past the pylon. Hogs strike first. They're up 7-0. Later in the first, Razorbacks D is still getting home. Welcome back, Miles Slusher. His tackle for a loss, forcing a three and out. Ensuing drive, KJ's been waiting for a national spotlight to light it up. On the absolute heave, he's got a wide open Warren Thompson. It's on the money, and Thompson cashes it in for six. A 56-yard bomb, and you hear that? Thousands screaming Woo Pig Suey, and the scoreboard screaming 14-0 Hawks. In the second frame, though, a big momentum shift. Pushed back to their own end zone, Devon Shane breaks it loose on the edge, going 63 yards until he's finally taken down. On a third down, Max Johnson finishes it off, tossing it up for grabs, and Evan Stewart is underneath it. Aggies cut the deficit to seven and take the momentum, but the Razorbacks' offense is back in business. KJ connects with Jaden Hazelwood to move the chains. On the goal line, Hogs so close to points they can almost taste it. Jefferson on the keeper and going aerial, but the ball pops out. Ricocheting into an Aggie's arms. Rocket Sanders catching up and corralling Tyreek Chappelle, but AM has a hot potato. The exchange goes to Richardson, and he's got a runway down the sideline. A disastrous turnover by the Razorbacks, and the Aggies take it all the way back for 97 yards, all the way to the house. It's a tale of two quarters, the first half ending with Arkansas holding on to a 14-13 edge. But out of the locker rooms, the troubles continue. Ashan cuts it back and barrels his way past the goal line. The Aggies take their first lead of the ball game, up six early in the third. The Razorbacks give up 20 straight points since leading big, and Hog fans are starting to sweat like pigs. Fast forward to early in the fourth, and Arkansas trails 23 to 14, but the Hogs get their swagger back. Rashad Dubinian fights for the first. KJ Jefferson using his legs as weapons on the QB draw, falling forward and into the red zone. With goal to go, KJ on the QB option this time, pulls it and tucks it, faking a man out and skips his way in for the tutty. Razorbacks are back in this thing, down by just two and getting fans back on their feet. Aggies driving, but the defense locks down at the perfect time. Eric Gregory crashing in for the sack. AM would go for the triple, but they're off the mark. Hogs trail 23 to 21 and get it back with six and a half minutes left. On a crucial third down, Jefferson rolls out and completes to Matt Landers, keeping the drive alive. Arkansas trying to get back into field goal range, and QB1 KJ1 does just that, keeping it right up the gut, slicing, dicing, and splitting defenders. The drive chews up five minutes of clock, and to take the lead, here's Cam Little from 42 yards away. It's up, sailing a little wide, and doinks off the top of the goal post, falling back down and in play. It's a game of inches, the kick's no good, and the Aggies are able to kill the clock from there. So Arkansas storms ahead early, goes cold, finds life late, but comes just short, falling to Jimbo Fisher's Texas A&M Aggies, 23-21. A gut-wrenching loss because this game has huge implications for who will be number two in the SEC West behind Alabama. That's a tough one. Um, give A&M all the credit uh, in the world. They, you know, fought back from 14 down and had a couple of big plays and then a big run and then certainly a, a big fumble, you know, recovery. And uh, but I, I was proud of our kids. I thought we fought, fought back in the fourth quarter and. I didn't like the ones when we tried to run stretch and we lost a yard or two. I didn't like the passes that we overthrew. I didn't like those. I didn't like whenever we ran inside zone and we got a yard. I didn't like them either. We got an offensive coordinator, a damn good one, and whatever we decide that we're going to do, we do it as a staff. And 
and I wish they'd have worked, but they worked in practice, and I'm I'm not questioning his calls. Our team's hurting right now, but Alabama's going to be a big game whether we won tonight or whether we didn't, and I, th- I thought our defense played a lot better game. You know, it's just there was some – they got the momentum, then we had it back, then they got the momentum, and then we had it back there at the end. And, you know, the only question I had there at the end was, you know, I let the time run down to call a timeout. There was no question my mind was going to make it, and I was just trying to get all the time off. But then, in hindsight, if we'd had two, maybe they'd had to punt, you know, and maybe we'd had opportunity. But that that one there, now that we didn't make it, I I certainly question it. I think we'll bounce back. I really do. I mean, I love our kids, and they're tough and and resilient, and 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 they know Alabama's got a really good team, and the place will be sold out and rocking in there uh, next Saturday night. 